Hi everyone, welcome to Applying with Loads to a Structure in S3D. I'm Daniel Vivas, Product Manager of SkyZip Engineering. And in this tutorial, I'll guide you through the process of modeling wind loads on a structure using S3D. Remember that you can use the standalone version of Load Generator to get an easy step-by-step -step wind, snow, and seismic load calculations to design your structures. Also, you can find more information about snow, wind loads, and many more topics in our documentation. So, let's get started. Let's create a new project. Let's create our members. In this step, I will not use this form, but I will use this pen tool. So, I can create members just by clicking on the screen. So, the first member will have five meters. The second one will have eight meters. And I will repeat this process four more times. I will replicate these elements and on the Z axis, so I just have to select them hitting Ctrl A. I can go here to operations and repeat, or I can just hit Ctrl D. I'll repeat these members four times along the Z axis with a distance of 8 meters. So I click on submit, and this is the result. Let's create our beams in the Z direction using the pen tool. I will divide these elements that I just created into small elements. So I have to select them, do right click, click on intersect members, and you can see that new members are created from these big members that I had. Now I will replicate this section of the structure along the y axis. So we will have two more pores. So I just have to select these members. I will click Ctrl C and I will select this node and hit Ctrl B and this node and hit Ctrl V again. And now we have all of our members defined. We will create now our supports. We just have to select all of these lower nodes. I will go to supports. I will double click here so the program will identify which nodes are selected. I will leave this fixed support and I will click on apply. And that's it. We will start the creation of our wind loads. In this case, we can go to area loads. We will open this auto generate load from design codes. I'll click on reset. I'll select this design code. And this will open the load generator model inside S3D. In this side data, we can define a risk category. In this case, I will select this. I will put a project address and select this. This will calculate this wind and snow data. I can also select the exposure category and the wind source direction. This will give me the ground elevation model and some values from the terrain data from this elevation chart. Now, we can go to this structure data. For the structure data, I will select this as a building. The roof profile, I will choose monoslope. I can verify that this information is correct. And the roof, the roof pitch angle will be zero for our case. I will now uncheck this calculate snow load 
because at this moment I'll show you the example with the wind loads. Also like a type of a structure of main wind force resisting system. And the enclosed classification will be partially enclosed buildings. Floor, for these floor elevations, I will add three rows. The floor level number two will be this one. So the elevation will be five, be 10, and the floor level is okay. So after, after I have my information correct, I can click here on generate loads. You can see that our area loads are applied to our model, but we have some errors. So if you check this model, you can see that the wind loads are not applied correctly. So that's why I showed this example, which is not a regular geometry, but it has some complexities in the geometry. So in these cases, uh, we need to put all the data manually. So I will show you how to achieve this. Uh, the first that we're going to do is that we're going to delete all of these area types and I'll clear these uh, generated area wind loads. Let's add a new row. The first thing to notice here is that we have these different area types. We have these windward, leeward, uh, sidewall. So you can actually see the information about these area types clicking in this tooltip and it will explain how to put all the node information if for example we have a windward wall we have to put the nodes in this order so you can see that this bottom left will be one this upper left will be two this upper right will be three and this bottom right will be four and you can see all of the cases if you want to use a windward wall how to put all the nodes and you can check all of this information here for this example we will assume that the wind direction will be along this z-axis so actually our windward area will be this area so uh, if you remember we need to put um, these node IDs in certain order and uh, this will be the order so we have to put this node at first this will be the second node to put this will be the third node and this will be the fourth node we have to divide this uh, face of the building into two areas so we will define this at first and then we will define this I will put now these first uh, area of this phase of the building so the nodes will be 10 64 I'll rotate this model 52 sorry, 52 and 4 so I will generate the loads just to check that everything is working correctly And you can see that this area is receiving these, these wind loads, so it is correct. So I will finish with this small area. So what I will do next is that I will clear these loads generated. It was just to check that everything was working correctly. And I will add a new area type. So I will type now nodes 4, 3, 2, 1. To one, I will click here again and generate loads. And you can see that all of my wind loads are applied correctly to this wind work. And uh, as you can remember, I had to split this face of the building into two areas. So that's the way how we should do it manually. Next, I will define my leeward areas so I have to define this phase of the building so what I will do is that I will split this phase into two areas this will be the first area and this will be 
the second area. So we can go back to our willows and I will define these these areas. I have to modify these to wall leeward. I will add a second one and I can start typing the nodes. So in the first case it will be 33, 91, 97 and 39 for the second one will be 41 42 49 and then 50 remember to keep the these rules of the node notation that you can check here in this tool tip so I will clear the loads that I generated and I will regenerate these loads just to check that everything is working correctly in this leeward uh, case. So as you can see, all of our wind loads are correctly generated in this uh, leeward as well. So what I will do next is that I will finish the this the implementation of these area types in the sidewalls. So I will repeat the same process just to uh, add two more area types and I will define these these areas just as I showed you before with the windward and the leeward areas. As you can see all of our loads are created now that we have our sidewall loads. So actually you can see here that all of these four cases are created so you can actually check how the error loads are applied on each of these uh, members of the building and I will leave it like equivalent error loads and I will activate these all of these cases now um, what you can do next is that you can create a roof leeward, windward as well. You can also create more area types along the B direction. So you would be using these side walls as windward. But in this case, we'll leave it like this for this example. You can also find these uh, wind pressure along L. You can see uh, different values, different calculations along B as well and you can check more information here you can generate a low report and a detailed detailed mean calculations in our case we'll leave it like this I'll actually clear all of these uh, loads I'll generate them again and I will apply this to the S3D model there are some cases where you have to define different factors for your wind loads so for example you will have to apply one of these cases what you can do is that you can go to these load combos you can create your own load combination for example case one for example and you can modify these factors uh, as you need some of them will be 0, 0 0.75 or whatever number you need to use here you can do it here so just to keep it in mind we we won't do that in this example but just to to remember that you can do it here now let's define our materials and sections uh, in this example i will use the section builder i will select the shape template in this case i will choose the rectangular one i will put a section of 600 by 600 millimeters and I will choose this material as a concrete. Now that everything is set, I can submit this section. And by default, all of the elements that were unassigned will now have this, this section. So if I go to the 3D renderer, you will see that now we have sections in our building. So we are ready to now solve our building. 
we will select here the linear static here we can check our results by default we will have this load combination that will include all of these cases and will give them a factor of one so we can use this load combination to see all of the results you can check the reactions and check the share forces also the moment forces I will move this scale so you can see it better you can check the actual results and also you can check the displacement if you move this scale you will see it better mm, it makes sense that the hard values are along this z-axis if you remember we defined this phase of the building as the windward so it makes sense that we are obtaining these results and also with these uh, values with these results you can create reports and you can also I have to to choose a load combination this will take a couple of seconds to generate this report and when it is ready we can view this report we can actually see the member and forces and moments you can access data of your elements and you can download it as a PDF or as an HTML file you have completed the applying wind loads to a structure in a 3D tutorial I hope this tutorial has provided you with valuable insights into the process of modeling wind loads on S3D. If you have any questions or need assistance, our team at Skysip Engineering is always here to help.